You know, it was the ones that uh, could handle 100 mile an hour winds. Hi, I'm Petra Hilleberg. I am here with the most prolific polar explorer, the person who's been to the poles the most out of anyone, and uh, eco activist, environmentalist, amazing skier, world traveler, guide. Can go on. Dunk yes, soup. yes, I am. <laughs> so. I am bipolar. Uh, yeah, I'm an eco warrior. Uh, I think really that. Uh, the impetus was that back in 2005 when I did my first North Pole trip, uh, the scientists came to me and asked me, um, you know, what can you do on the Arctic Ocean? And I just didn't want to beat my chest and get to the pole. So I went to them and I said, what can I do to help out? And they handed me a 50 pound box. And <laughs> you know, you know, polar explorers, we yeah. cut our toothbrush in half and yeah. cut our labels out of clothing and oh. only carry the exact necessities that we need. I wear the same underwear for two months. So uh, for them to give me a 50 pound box is like ridiculous. And so I looked at all the instruments inside and I redesigned the beacon uh, to weigh about six pounds. Oh, wow. uh, and so what these beacons did, I placed three of them on the ice. Um, and they did temperature, barometric pressure, but what was most important is the location of where that ice was moving. Oh, wow. And that was one of the things that the scientists really needed to learn more about climate change is where that ice was moving. And so um, I'm really proud of that. It's probably much I'm more proud of building these beacons because now the Arctic Buoy Program, which is about 16 nations, is using a beacon that I designed. Oh, wow. And I'm pretty much just a knucklehead. And so to have that uh, notoriety and, and really a standing ovation for the climate scientists out there to really help uh, this climate um, problem that we have is uh, something I'm truly proud of. How did you get started? Like why, why this interest in polar and mountain? And I think it was really an organic beginning because I read the books as a kid of Shackleton and Scott and Amundsen and the turn of the century explorers and it fascinated me but never ever in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I'd be walking in those footsteps yeah. and I think my Antarctic infatuation started you know I had a dream to go climb the highest peak of Antarctica and uh, it had never been skied or snowboarded and what I didn't realize is just that the first moment that I set foot in Antarctica I really fell in love and it was this amazing experience where I stepped off onto the ice and it's minus 40, it's blowing 40 knots. And I was like, this is wild to be able to experience that. Yeah. And then we went on to have a successful ski and snowboard descent of the mountain. We got stuck a couple different camps and skied all kinds of lines and sort of really um, fell in love. I wanted to see more. Uh, and uh, 47 trips to Antarctica this, since uh, 1999. So. 47? Um, yeah. Okay. Amazing. But uh, quite a learning experience. But um, to just circle back, I mean, I, I have to use, this is one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. Yeah. And I think that you really need to use the best equipment out there to be successful. And I think the planning and preparation with any trip that you do leads to success, even with if it's going to the local store, yeah. you know. but. These are, um, you know, there's no store out there. There's no lodge. You really need to have um, a safe environment for you to, to, to really live and survive and be able to cook in and stuff like that and sleep in. And I have found that, um, that Hildeberg tunnel tents and, and specifically the Carons were the best tents on the market. You know, it was the ones that uh, could handle 100 mile an hour winds. Um, I sometimes had to double pull some of the poles, yeah. um, you know, which you guys do anyway. I love that they're the ones that I use are red, so we're, uh, I have separation anxiety with my clients a lot of the time and I want them to wear bright colors, so I like that there's a red tent that's sitting in and usually a, a completely white environment. But um, it's been, you know, a, a huge feather in my cap to lead so many successful, not only polar journeys, but journeys around the world and using these quality tents, you know. And I thank you for, you know, putting amazing tents together to be able to do what we do because uh, I've seen other competitors out there and they certainly don't last. So uh, I think it's the go-to tent, not only within my expeditions, but every other professional expedition that I see out there. And I also am an international polar guide, and it's actually on one of the gear lists 
for all IPGA guides to make sure that you're using the Elderberg tent. So oh. um, that's uh, part of something that I've helped. There's only I actually, I actually didn't even know that. There's the only 13 of us in, yeah, on yeah. the planet. So there's uh, it's building though. There's other people that are uh, that are uh, starting to build on that too. It's amazing. So. But so for being a puller and a cold guy, you also then went stand up paddle boarding through the Amazon. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I'm a mountain man and a polar guy that yeah. pretends to be a waterman. I love surfing. I love stand-up paddling. Um, I, and that's sort of a, an endurance thing, too, because I've been trying to push the limits with that. I went around Lake Tahoe in 16 hours. I went from Cuba to Key West in 24 hours. I've done a few Molokai to Oahu races, but I do love the oceans. Oceans, to me, are very humbling. Um, I have complete respect. I do a lot of sailing as well. We do like sail ski trips. My company, Ice Axe Expeditions. Um, but we do Amazon as well, which is a, an amazing trip. We've been doing that for almost 10 or 12 years. And I love going to these environments on our planet where you learn about how to live off the rainforest and you learn from these indigenous tribes and you really um, can learn so much. But uh, it is um, an amazing trip. and. Yeah. And we're exploring other ways to go and do trips. I think um, Ice Axe offers about 30 expeditions a year. Oh, wow. I'm probably do about six or seven of them. Uh, we're doing a lot more polar stuff. We're flying people to the North and South Pole. Uh, we're doing fat tire bike trips where we use Hildeberg tents as well. And th that's sort of a new thing. And we're doing probably 200 mile trips. It's amazing. So. You also do a lot with education. Are you taking Kids. Yeah, I have a, the Ice Axe Foundation that I yeah. started almost 15 or 16 years ago, but I launched this year uh, what's called Impact Schools. And we'll take students. We just got back from the Arctic Wildlife Refuge up in Alaska, and we lived at the Inuit village. There were several students that went along, and my educator, who's a PhD, um, is doing some amazing work up there. And so the students lived with an Inuit uh, village, and they have environmental sciences, and they actually get college credit for this adventure that they so go on. these college kids? These are high school kids high that school. are getting college credit for okay. this adventure. And we have a trip planned in October to the Amazon and then one right after to Bhutan. How does and, one get on that trip? Uh, they can log on to IsaacsImpactSchool.org and it is a 5013C and they can learn more. Or they can email me at Doug at Isaacs.tv and I'll give them all the information. Well, Doug, thank you so much for spending time with me and hanging out and telling your story. Well, it's my pleasure, and I'm a proud ambassador for Hildeberg Tents and will continue to be, and uh, thank you for making an incredible product. Thank you.